we're going to be palpating the palmaris longus uh, today here. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify its origin, and we're going to be looking at the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and again via the common flexor tendon. So I'm going to show you kind of the action of my other hand. What I want you to do is bring all of your fingers into a point and then flex your wrist up like so. Good. And I'm going to have you repeat that a couple times. Great. I'm going to follow down over top of the forearm belly. Let's do that again. Good. And this time I'm going to have you bring your fingers to a point and just hold it there. Now I'm going to be providing some resistance against her wrist flexion. And what you should actually be able to see right away is that this tendon is starting to stick up. It is a very superficial tendon. There is a population of people that do not have palmaris longuses. So in some people you may not see this tendon sticking up, but it is very close to the surface. So if I get her to relax her wrist for me, and again, to start to do that wrist flexion right away, her sticks up nicely, very easy to see. If you don't see it, just try to palpate that superficial tissue. So with this tendon, again, I'm gonna gently cross fiber heading back down towards our origin, which is on the medial epicondyle, like so. You can have your person pulse it if you want to using repeated wrist flexion, but if not, it should be fairly easy to follow in a straight line heading back towards that origin here on the medial epicondyle. Now for its insertion, this one is a little bit more interesting. So we're gonna outline what's called the flexor retinaculum. In this location right in here, I'm palpating the scaphoid tubercle. Just distal to that and towards the thumb, we have the trapezium tubercle. So I'll put two fingers on that. On the ulnar side of the hand, we have the pisiform. And just as distal to that is the hook of hamate. So these are the four attachment sites for the flexor retinaculum. So I'm going to pinch that currently right here. So this is the first insertion of palmaris longus. So this tendon attaches into this ligamentous structure right in here, and then splays out into the palmar aperosis of the hand. I'm going to ask that you just spread your fingers and hold that position as I'm going to kind of pull down against them. Good. I'm going to try to use one hand on your fingers and try to do that again. So the palmar aponeurosis covers the entire palm of the hand and kind of creates this outlining layer as it tightens up all the fascia in the space. So that is the secondary attachment and insertion um, for palmaris longus. Its action is not really to have any function on the fingers, so it will not be flexing the fingers, but it pulls all this fascia together. So we often ask the person to bring all their fingers to a point, tightening up the palm of the hand, also tightening up that flexor retinaculum, but the action at a joint is to create wrist flexion, which is why we added some resistance when all those fingers are together. Go ahead and push up against me, and you can easily see that palmaris longus tendon. The palmaris longus is also innervated by the median nerve. 